Ready? Here we go. Ready? Ready? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Alex. And we want to just like to borrow your attention for 10 minutes and talk about a psalm with you. Uh, wait, wait. You said we're going to make a good video. But it, it will be good with a psalm. Yeah, i going to be honest, not my favourite parts of the Bible. Ah, but maybe you're reading it wrong. Yeah. I think the mistake is reading it at all. <laughs> listen, listen, tell me some of the songs that you think mean a lot to people. Well, it's normal songs. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, songs. Uh, let's start with the obvious. The higher you build your barriers, the solar I become. <laughs> okay, so, why, why does that mean a lot to people? Oh, um, it was written to like get rid of an unjust system in the world. It's a song of defiance, isn't it? Yes. Build your walls and we'll just grow taller. Okay. Got any more? Any more important what songs? Thing? Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones. I will, I will try, try to fix, fix you. you. <laughs> yeah. So that's a song about being there for someone no matter what. Yep. One of the most streamed songs of the whole of the 20th century, oh, really? actually. Really? Wow. Must have struck a nerve with yeah. people, hey? Yeah. More chord with people. So, so I can, I can dance for the Frasier. I just want to praise you. Oh, 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 literally a song of just praising God for freedom. There's loads and loads of songs that are basically brilliant poems set to music. Uh, there's also a lot of popcorn, sugar, <laughs> sales driven stuff. But yeah. amongst that, there's real heartfelt okay. poetry out there. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. I'm not one of those. So you're telling me that is the song we're going to look at is like that. It's a deep, deep meaning poem. Yeah, all the Psalms are. They're, they're like these emotional outpourings. They're, they're about love and hate and victory and defeat and friendship and feeling abandoned, sometimes by people, sometimes even by God. And at the same time as telling us how people feel about life, faith and love, and they tell us about what God's like in there too. Okay, you've sold it. <laughs> well, you've sold one, one, one Psalm. Got to get ahead of ourselves. Which one is it? Uh, well, there are like 150 psalms in the Bible. Some are super short, some are super long. We're going to look at quite a short one, Psalm 138. Is that his name? Boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump into it. And you can see as we go what it tells us about people and about God and about ourselves. Okay. okay. All in a poetical yes. manner. <laughs> Do we have to speak in rhyme? <laughs> no, that's rhymes you're thinking of. Poems and songs don't have to rhyme. Okay, but, but we could rhyme. Yeah, that would be irritating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So let's do Psalm 138. Yes. So we think it was King David who wrote this. He either wrote or commissioned loads and loads of Psalms. Um, and he starts off in a very common way telling us how amazing God is. Don't they all start like that? No, some start like, God, why have you abandoned me? <laughs> or, why is there war and fighting everywhere? Why or, not? we weep by these riv rivers to burn where we used to live. But lots of them do, do start quite upbeat. This is one of those. Okay, good. Go on then. How does it start? Uh, it starts, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart before the gods. I'll sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple. Praise your name because of your love and faithfulness for you have glorified your name and your word above all things oh that's nice no it's not nice it isn't no. nice no well it's nice if you live in a nice safe western country with freedom of religion yes well oh. because you said that i'm guessing this wasn't written in that kind of environment probably not either it really was written by david when he became king after being on the run from the previous king king saul or it was rewritten when the Jews came back from being in exile. Okay, so King Saul had kind of abandoned God, hadn't he? <laughs> yeah, he yeah. consulted the dead, tried to have David killed, and murdered great swathes of people with his evil machinations. Yep. Not good. Not good. Or if it's the exile, coming back from the exile, they were like surrounded by other gods being worshipped, and they'd have all been trying to literally face Jerusalem to remember God, like Daniel did in the book of Daniel. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, he did. So imagine David's hiding out in caves or homes or wanting to worship, or imagine people in exile wanting to worship. Either way, it's it's both an act of thankfulness to God and an act of defiance 
I, I will worship you, no matter who's around me, no matter what they say. That's why the second bit's in there. You've glorified your name and your word literally above everything. In other words, no matter what's happening around me, and who comes and takes stuff away, what government or leaders are in place, and what they're doing, God has the final word. Exactly. Which, which makes sense of the next part. Here you go. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put a new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you. They have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the mm. Lord. But the writers are like, I know that what I see now is that only some people get it, but one day there will be a time when rulers across the face of the earth recognize who God really is. Yes. And not in a we'll make this happen at you kind of way. More like God will just make it happen. And the people who already know God will be like, yes, I told you. So it, again, it's like defiant, defiant, defiant hopefulness. This is fast becoming my new favorite song, <laughs> which from our earlier discussion, doesn't feel like there was much competition. <laughs> keep going, keep going. So it's all about me. Okay, okay. <laughs> the final three verses are all about the character of God, who the world is going to be able to see. And then there's a clue in here as to why they can't see him now. Oh. Okay, go on then. Okay, so here yeah. it says this. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You'll stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. It's gonna lead, need a little bit of unpacking. You're losing me slowly. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's start with the lowly proud bit. What does that mean? Okay. That the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. And okay, the writers are all like, God's more awesome than any king or dictator or president, but he's watching out for all the people who think that they're basically nothing. Yes. And the opposite of that is the next line. So the people who are proud, which is Bible language for people who've decided they don't want or need God. Oh, okay, okay. Now you say no to God. Yeah. He keeps away as far as yeah. you want him to. Yeah. Nice. So that's why most of the Earth's kings or leaders didn't see who he was until that last day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we too often okay. don't see God because we've chosen not to. Okay. And the next bit makes sense too then. If we're choosing to want him and we're the humble ones who like, God, I need your help here, then whatever we're going through, God preserves us and fights for us against the evil of the world. And his good purpose for us will always bubble up to the surface. Yes, yes. Yeah. Nice one. Then there's like a, don't forget me. <laughs> yeah, <at> the <laughs> yeah. Remember me? The, the, remember the writers lost a lot of people in battles and death and destruction and hurt and betrayal before this whole thing gets written. You know. So the writers not all like, trust in Jesus, everything will be okay. <laughs> don't get hurt and everything will work out. No, he's really not, is he? But there is recognition that through it all, somehow, in the end, good will come from all of this rubbish. So you could summarize the whole thing, we could redo it like this. Despite all the rubbish and betrayal and death around me, despite all the pressures and the lack of belief and the hurt, I choose defiantly to direct my heart at you. You never fail to be good and loving and faithful, so I will turn to you inside and out, privately and publicly, no matter what it costs me. One day we'll all see you anyway. We'll all see that even though you rule the universe, you come down and hunt down the broken ones like me. We'll all see that the reason you seemed absent is because we said we didn't want you. But we'll also see that you had good plans for everybody and that under the surface of chaos, there was a river of loving kindness and grace. So don't forget me. <laughs> I feel so pumped up with faith right now. That's Psalm 138. So I guess the question is, could that be how you feel? Yes. Knowing that the writer had done a, a ton of rubbish before coming to these conclusions, it puts things into perspective for us today. But it can still feel really hard to go public with faith yeah. sometimes. 
I love the bit about God searching for the broken ones and only really coming as close as our pride allows him to. That's a challenge for me right yeah. there. Yeah. So, may your brokenness call out to God and may he come close to heal you. May your walls of pride get broken down and allow God to walk alongside you right now. May you know his good purpose for your life and may you know that he will never ever forget you.